A very warm welcome to August Klein Sano. Uh, thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. The Hereafter. At the gates to the Hereafter, a rather drab affair, might as well be a union hall in South Milwaukee, but with shackled, sweating bodies along the walls, female chiefly and not at all miserable, straining like aboard sultanas at their fetters, each of them singing a separate song. A Semitic chap, the greeter, I suppose, gives me the quick once over. And most amused, he seems to be, has me figured. Not unlike a gent I met only last week, a salesman at a stereo shop on Broadway. So, he says, nothing more. So buttons, I say, in a cavalier mood, and why not? Ushers me into a tiny cinema, a two-seater, really quite deluxe, a great big Diet Coke in, in the cup holder, fizzing away. Okay, he asks. I nod, and the film unrolls. A $20 million home movie it is, featuring yours truly. At the foot of the stairs with the dog, mounting a Josette in a new Smyrna love nest, a fraught kitchen showdown with mom, the suicide, car wreck, home run. You know what these things are like. The outlandish hairdos, pastel bathroom fixtures. The editing is out of this world. The whole shebang in under an hour. The air raid drill on Wednesday morning, 1957, when Tito wet his pants. There I am, beside myself with laughter. Miserable little creature. The elemental, slow motion machinery of characters forcing house. Even with all the fancy camera angles, jump cuts and the rest, might as well be a chain of short features. Animal husbandry, sexual hygiene, a Lisboa by night. What a lot of erections, voidings, pretzels, bouncing the ball against the stoop. She really did love you all along. These jealousies and rages of yours, like a disgusting skin condition that never entirely goes away. You, you, what catalogs of failure Self-deception. And then the lights come back on. Likewise, the choir's splintered polyphony with its shards of sprechzimmer, of the ronettes, whatnot. And in the air around us, something like the odor of a freshly spent cartridge. When, my minder asks brightly, how about another Coke? Orientation Weekend. At the Hotel Oblivion, Airport Drive, Mezzanine, Conference Center B, PowerPoint Presentation Number One, Career Enhancement Strategy. Mary Ray's pink ice service trembles in an aftershock of some astral seizure, so remote and faint only the weevil's foreleg dare say, yes, 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 it's true. Next up, team building exercises. Woof, woof. Burgundy carpet, big yellow dots, that new smell, glycol ethers, four phenyl cyclobenzene in the latex backing. Break, free coffee, light snacks, get acquainted. Mm. Pardon me, Miss Carnoustie, is that your panty line or a silken esker of longing? Have an hallucination. Have a bagel. We had an issue under discussion here regarding the lighting, I believe, that tenebrous strip beyond the chandelier's orb. Hey, help, 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 help me out here. Not, not now, Peg, I'm teething. Are we ready for the evening fault shower? Hold on, the jacaranda's gone missing. Waiter, some more vitamin water and 
hurry. Wow. Here comes 36,000 blasts of ink per second in four, count them, four brilliant colors and with no telltale digital trace. I see a, I see a hand up. Uh, Mr. Gomez, are we still on the same page? Now, I just dropped these. Let's see if I reorganize them in a uh, reasonable way. If not, I will. That's just another art trick. We'll read them as they, uh, as they lay. A History of Western Music, Chapter 13. And um, uh, many of you will recognize the subject in this uh, uh, poem as being the great American jazz artist, Thelonious Monk, on an early visit to Paris. The large black man is dancing. He is dancing in his head on the stage of the Sal Pleil. And the Parisians are watching as he takes one step to the left. But look, his foot is not touching the ground, as if it's too hot or cold or not to be found there at all, then slamming it down and spinning round like a drunk in his funny hat. The large black man is dancing on the stage of the Sal Playel. He has gotten up from the piano and begun his silly dance, lurching first one way, then wait. He is changing his mind, frozen there in space on just one leg. His drummer and bass, Pierre, that is, and Claude, puzzling through what he has left behind, soldiering on regardless, wondering where they replaced, misplaced the time on the stage of the Sal Playel. The large black man is dancing, dancing in his head on the stage of the Sal Playel, and the hundreds of French are watching him twitch or swat away an imaginary cord in order to make room for the next with a pirouette, courtly as a maitre d' on roller skates. The large black man, the large black man is dancing and the Parisians are watching nervously. But the drummer Pierre, that is in Claude on bass, are beginning to get it. They are watching the black man's dance and think they've found it. Relax, my cher, we are nearing the end of the tune. The black, uh, black man is dancing, dancing his head on the stage of the Grand Théâtre and the lovers of jazz are there and they are out there in force watching the black man from America, watching the black man dance. It is 1954 and the tune is Trinkle Tinkle. What are they to do? What to make of the black man up there dancing? Is he foo? Does he, know not, not, does he not know where he is or who is in the audience watching? There is the editor of a Jazz Hot. Section C, aisle 12, seat number two. He will be confused. No, is he being made the fool? What are they all to do? Pierre and Claude, the drummer, that is, and the contrabass, they think, okay, I've got it where the accents drop, where not, and those very weird spaces between, <laughs> but not really. The large black man in his coat and his tie and the funny little hat and crazy grin, the large black Man is dancing. Meat. How much meat moves into the city each night? The decks of its bridges tremble in the liquefaction of sodium light and the moon, a chemical orange. Semi-trailers strain their axles, shivering as they take the long curve over warehouses and lofts, the wilderness and streets below, the mesh of it with Joe on the front stoop smoking and Louise on the phone with her mother. Out of the haze of industrial meadows, they arrive numberless, hauling tons of dead lamb, bone, and flesh and offal, miles to the ports and channels of the city's shimmering membrane, a giant breathing cell exhaling its waste from the stacks
rocks by the river and feeding through the night. Do I have time for a longish one? About five minutes? Yeah, okay. Sleeping it off in Rapid City. Rapid City uh, is uh, um, really no place uh, one might ordinarily go to visit, but it's, it's in the, uh, on the American, northern end of the American Great Plains, really where the west begins, uh, in the western part of uh, South Dakota. Uh, and it's really very close to the center of uh, the United States. Um, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Sleeping it off on Rapid, in Rapid City. On a 700-foot thick shelf of Cretaceous pink sandstone, no mezzo, sixth floor, turn right at the elevator, the hotel of the century, elegant dining, dancing, solarium, around the block from the Black Hills School of Beauty and campaign headquarters of one Jack Billion, together we can move forward the exact center of the Oglala known universe, Kante Mamagwakwakwe, or only 30 miles or so away southwest off Highway 87. I awaken to the sound of the D, M, and E rattling through this sleeping town, sounding its horn as it snakes its way, hauling coal from nowhere through nowhere, and then some old rocks and distance, a few hawks overhead, 4 a.m., Her una selva oscura. Quack, quack, quack! Shrieks a velociraptor in the closed dinosaur shop. Vroom! Roars a triterus, triter triceratops like Texas thunder. They keep the tape loop going through the night. Always have done. No one knows why. The Bible store respires in its sanctum as if in an outsized black glass humidor. This is sacred ground, a holy place. 4 a.m. in a sacred place. I can tell this is a sacred place. I needn't be told. It's in the air. I feel it. This old heritage hotel. This is a sacred place. The tour buses are lined up outside it, awaiting the countless pilgrims. On the floor, my shoe, under the bed. Even my shoe is blessed. The Lord's blessing is everywhere to be found. The lambs of Christ are among us. You can tell by the billboards, the billboards with fetuses out there on the highway through the buzzing sodium-lit night. Semis grinded out on the interstate, hauling toothpaste, wheels of Munster rapeseed oil. Blessed is the abundance, blessed the commerce. Across the Cretaceous hogback, hundred million year old Lakota sandstone, clays, shale, gypsum, and down through the basins of ancient seabeds, past the souvenir shops and empty missile silos, the ghosts of 98 foot long titans and minutemen, 150,000 pounds of thrust, stainless steel, nickel alloy coated warheads, quartz ceramic warheads webbed in metal honeycomb, eight megaton payloads, range 6,300 miles. Noli me tangere, God bless America. We're right on top of it, baby. This is why you're here. Close enough, anyhow, just 11 miles west of Castle Rock in a pasture, right off 79, the middle of the middle of the heart of this great land. There is a sign. This is a sacred place. Up there in the hills of S, Ponderosa, feathered batholith, you can see it from space. Two billion year old exposed rock rising from the prairie, a faint blue shape on the horizon when approaching from a distance, but seen close at hand, grim and black. Paha, sapa, savage cliffs and precipices, fantastic forms, sometimes resembling towns, some castellated fortresses. A sacred place. Custer once came through here in the summer of 74 with that mustache and golden hair and espied, espied here the multitude of flowers, 17 varieties in a space of 20 feet. One could pick seven different kinds at dinner without ever leaving one's seat. It was a strange sight, he wrote, to glance back at the advancing columns of cavalry and behold the men with beautiful bouquets in their hands. A sacred place. The great white fathers dwell in these hills, noses and foreheads blasted out of granite. Crazy horse, too, 30 stories high, an enormous pod of migmatite glowering east. 
big chiefs everywhere, on every corner in town, life-size bronze likenesses. See the Chicana brushing President Van Buren, bless her. Bless the Chicana in pink rayon, the dutiful city worker, brushing the statue with a toothbrush in the night. There's Nixon at St. Joseph and Fifth, seated, hands folded on his lap the way he did, in the midst of delicate negotiations with Mao. This is what it says at the base. Bless them, Nixon and Mao both, men of peace, soldiers of God. The bronze is cold in the high plains night. The eyes they gaze out of our holes here at the exact dead center of America or close enough, just north of here off Highway 79. The buffalo roam in these hills. Ha ha, sapa, the bison grays in the shadow of these hills. One angry bull tosses a Harley 30 feet in the air, a big fat biker attached to it 30 feet as well. The sacred bison, he would have ridden among the sacred bison, the biker, ridden as if he were one of their own. Tatanka, Tatanka, cries Kevin Costner. Tatanka concurs kicking bird. Tatanka agrees wind in his hair. Bless Kevin Costner. I saw that one on the widescreen in Dolby Surround Sound. Kevin Costner stayed in this hotel. Babe Ruth and Calvin Coolidge, too. This is a sacred place. I have come here from far away after many years of wandering, dissolution, disillusion, and disillusion, and found Circe's here from all my cares, Circe's here from all doubt, here at the center of it all, on a great slab of Mesozoic rock this sanctified ground here, yes, here, the dead solid center of the universe at the heart of the heart of America. Thank you very much.